It's another Q&A edition of Optimal Health Daily, episode 585, and I'm Dr. Neil, your host of the show. Welcome back to another special Friday edition of Optimal Health Daily, where I answer your questions. On the other days, I read health and fitness blogs to you, kind of like an audiobook. Sharing health and wellness information with others is truly my passion. But as we know, passion alone doesn't make for a credible source. And so by referring myself to Dr. Neil, that's not just a nickname. I do have my doctorate of public health degree with an emphasis in chronic disease prevention and nutrition. I also have my master's of public health degree with an emphasis in health education and health promotion. I'm also a registered dietitian nutritionist, a certified health education specialist, and a certified exercise physiologist through the American College of Sports Medicine. When I'm not doing this podcast, I'm actually chair of the Department of Nutrition and Basic Sciences at Bastyr University, California, and I hold two other faculty positions as well. So again, sharing this information, teaching others, those are truly my passions. So let's hear today's question and my answer and start optimizing your life. Yes, this is uh... Anthony, I was calling to find out, is it possible you can give us some information on saline cinnamon? I wanted to know, was that healthy for you to take a little teaspoon and put it in water? And just trying to find out. Thank you. Hi, Anthony. Thank you for your question. Actually, the timing of your question is perfect. I just wrote a piece for Women's Health where I discussed potential immune-boosting foods. And one of those I just happened to mention was cinnamon. Cinnamon happens to be one of my favorite flavors, and with fall rapidly approaching, at least for those of us living in the Northern Hemisphere, what a perfect time to consider incorporating this spice into some of your favorite fall dishes. And if you're not quite sure whether you're willing to incorporate more cinnamon into your foods, let me quote the great Jerry Seinfeld here. Quote, people love cinnamon. It should be on tables at restaurants along with salt and pepper. Anytime someone says, oh, this is so good, what's in it? The answer invariably comes back, cinnamon, cinnamon, again and again. All right, so it's tasty, but does it have any health benefits? And what's the difference between the types of cinnamon, like Ceylon versus cassia? Well, let's discuss. Okay, so there are different types of cinnamon. While they may basically taste the same to us, each species contains a different combination of compounds. In the US, the most commonly available forms are cassia cinnamon, sometimes called Cinnamomum aromaticum. There's also Cinnamomum bermanii, Cinnamomum laurarii, and last but not least, the most expensive and least available, Ceylon cinnamon. Sometimes Ceylon cinnamon is known as true cinnamon. And I guess I should mention here that I'm not talking about cinnamon sugar. Because ground cinnamon is such a strong flavor, adding sugar to it makes it more appealing to our taste buds. But again, that's not what I'm talking about here. I'm discussing pure ground cinnamon with no added sugars. So what each of these species have in common is that they contain proanthocyanidins. That's a mouthful. So from here on out, I'm just gonna call these compounds PACs. PACs are antioxidants and are thought to provide health benefits. Now, PACs aren't just found in cinnamon, but in other plant-based foods as well. Cinnamon also contains cinnamaldehyde, which may prevent the growth of bacteria. And so it's these compounds that may provide health benefits. But like I always say, we need to look at the research and see whether any well-designed studies have been performed to examine the effects of cinnamon on health. Luckily, studies like these do exist. In fact, cinnamon has been found to help lower blood sugar in those with uncontrolled type 2 diabetes and those with prediabetes. And since diabetes is a disease where there's too much sugar floating around in the bloodstream, Decreasing this amount can be beneficial. There's also some evidence to suggest that the antioxidant properties of PACs may help reduce systemic inflammation in the body. And systemic inflammation is thought to cause a number of chronic health conditions, anything from cancer to Alzheimer's disease. So how much cinnamon do you need to consume? Well, most studies are finding that, believe it or not, just half a teaspoon per day may do the trick. And again, this needs to be pure ground cinnamon, not cinnamon sugar. But there is one concern with cinnamon that I have to mention, particularly if you're thinking of consuming it as a supplement. The more commonly found species, like cassia cinnamon, may contain high amounts of something called coumarin. Too much coumarin could harm the liver. And with supplements, you don't always know which species of cinnamon you're getting. 
So if you buy a supplement, you may end up consuming lots of cassia cinnamon, which contains higher amounts of coumarin, which may harm the liver. Consuming about six milligrams of coumarin per day could be enough to cause damage to the liver. Now, Ceylon cinnamon, on the other hand, does not contain high levels of coumarin. This may be why you've heard that Ceylon cinnamon is better for you. So the bottom line is this. Whether you're using cinnamon as a flavoring, say as a topping on your oatmeal or your baked sweet potatoes, or consuming it as a supplement, be sure the product you purchase is made up of mostly Ceylon cinnamon. That way, you'll get the most benefit with a lower risk of some of the potentially harmful effects. And who knows, maybe one day you sit down at a diner and you see a bottle of Ceylon cinnamon sitting right next to the salt and pepper, just like Jerry Seinfeld predicted. Thank you again for the question, Anthony. You'll be entered into a very small raffle every month to win a book. And if you want to submit a question and have a chance to win books, it's really easy. You can call in your question. The number is 61 I Love OHD. Or you can submit your audio question at oldpodcast.com slash ask. That'll let you record your question right from your computer, listen back to it, and then submit it to us. Again, that's at oldpodcast.com slash ask. I thank you in advance for doing that. And I thank you, as always, for listening every day and all the way through. Have a wonderful weekend. I'll see you back here on Monday where your optimal life awaits.